Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss briefly the pelvic inflammatory disease. And when we, when we say the word, when we utter a word that PID, that simply means that the inflammation of upper genital tract that involves fallopian tube, you ovaries, uterus and not the cervix and vagina. Kindly pay attention here not the cervix and vagina they are not included as PID okay now how to uh, how the infection spread to these structures because these structures are the internal abdominal structures there are only two ways to reach those organs the first one is ascending and very common is ascending infection ascending with sperms and the genital tract the gonococcus, chlamydia, mycoplasma, all these uh, three main organisms which causes the ascending infection of the PID goes through this route. And again a most important, very important uh, problem in India that is genital TB. The root is hematogenous. That means the primary infection is from the lungs and from that it spreads by the blood okay now what are the risk factors for becoming a PID the multiple sex partners low socio-economic status IUCD intrauterine contraceptive device and any instrumentation instrumentation if you see this thing it's clearly uh, clearly says that yes the ascending route is more favored in low socio-economic status group we have a higher uh, incidence of or prevalence of TB so yes this is also explained the higher incidence in this group now how, how to diagnose see the very understanding thing about PID is how you how you see the disorder it's a very important thing it's just not like to read the book and to have a diagnostic criteria and you see the criteria and fill the criteria and treat according to that and you investigate them. No, you don't do this thing in this PID. You, have, uh, you should have a collective approach when you see this kind of patients. The patients comes with a chronic abdominal pain, lower abdominal pain. They have adnexal tenderness. When you examine them, they have a cervical tenderness. They have a chronic fever, leukocytosis and other uh, markers of the inflammations. Biochemically, you can see or you can investigate those, uh, this uh, infection having this nuclear acid amplification test that is NAAT and culture of the discharge or uh, culture of the a particular uh, tissue or biopsy from the endometrium this biochemical thing is generally in in general practice we don't do this thing yeah culture or nucleic acid amplification test we don't do this thing we have some very basic criteria so if this thing is there then we take it as a yes she might be suffering some of the inflammatory disorders or PID some definitive criteria it has been tried to prove this thing but again I am telling you this is not very important you don't do a laparoscopy to diagnose PID basically in laparoscopy you will go uh, if you do a laparoscopy you see the dilated hyperemic tube pyosalpings tubo ovarian mass biopsy of the tube all these things you can see from ultrasound where you cannot do a biopsy from ultrasound but again from the ultrasound on USD you can see the tubo ovarian mass or dilated tube thickened wall of the tube you can do this thing from ultrasound only so ultrasound becomes the very first investigation if you even want to investigate if you see the sonography you can see this coagul appearance or waste sign on the tube this kind of structure you see on ultrasound this is basically the tube and this is the rugosity you see the waste sign when you just uh, the rotate the ultrasound probe 90 degree you will see this kind of structure this structure is converted into this appearance so this is also you can say opposing septas so this is a 
clear cut idea of that yes this there is something in the tube the tube is infected the and the other important aspect or other uh, very easy investigation is actually the endometrial biopsy it is a very opd procedure you just uh, you don't have to do anything it's slightly painful but yes it is very easy so endometrial biopsy if you do and you uh, take those endometrial samples for any culture media or any infection or even for tb pcr that is tuberculosis nucleic acid test again so endometrial biopsy and sonography becomes a very basic investigation laparoscopy remains the last now what i what i was talking about is you have you should have a syndromic approach to this kind of infections they don't waste time in investigating the things until unless it's very very severe you don't need to uh, waste your time in investigating those things you just give them the antibiotics which will clear the most common organism that uh, that uh, causes the pid that gonorrhea chlamydia both are dealt with the cefixime azithromycin doxycycline metronidazole this will cover almost all infections if it is not recovered in uh, if it is not uh, uh, useful in 72 hours then we can uh, see for iv antibiotics now there is one syndrome that is fitz high curtis syndrome what is that that is a adhesion in pid whenever uh, the infection or the pus discharges from the tube into peritoneal cavity this will go and causes the adhesions between liver capsule and parietal peritoneum and you will see the violin string adhesion violin string adhesion remember the name it is asked in exams so this kind of thing is also a sequelae of pid the patient will have a chronic abdominal pain and infertility and <clears throat> a discharge so this is how we see a pid thank you